Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is Miss Skoken. We are back in Chapter 4, Triangle Congruence, and this time we're looking at Section 4.9, Isosceles and Equilateral Triangles. Our objectives are prove theorems about isosceles and equilateral triangles and apply properties of isosceles and equilateral triangles. Our vocabulary includes legs of an isosceles triangle, vertex angle, base, and base angles. Let's take a look at our first warm-up question. Number one says, find each angle measure. And we have a figure. The figure shows us that we have a triangle with three congruent sides. That we can see that from the tick mark. And this means that this is an equilateral triangle. Equilateral triangles are also equiangular, which means they have three congruent angles. The triangle sum theorem tells us that the interior angles of a triangle all need to add up to 180 degrees, just like on this triangle. So that means that if we have 180 degrees divided by 3 to make them perfectly equal, every angle measures 60 degrees. Question number two says true or false. If false, explain why. Every equilateral triangle is isosceles. And you may remember from our notes that an isosceles triangle is a triangle that has at least two congruent sides. So yes, equilateral triangles are also isosceles triangles. Question three says true or false. If false, explain why. Every isosceles triangle is equilateral. And this is not true, because some isosceles triangles have exactly two congruent sides, and those, of course, are not equilateral. An isosceles triangle has at least two congruent sides, and the congruent sides of the isosceles triangle are called the legs. The vertex angle is the angle that is formed by the legs and the side opposite the vertex angle is called the base. Last of all, the base angles are the two angles on either side of the base. Now let's take a look at our new isosceles triangle theorems. 4-9-1, the isosceles triangle theorem says, if two sides of a triangle are congruent, then the angles opposite the sides are congruent. So here we have our two congruent sides, and the angles opposite each one of those are congruent. So remember, we show congruence with an arc mark. So these would have the same number of arc marks to show that they're congruent. The next theorem, 4-9-2, the converse of the isosceles triangle theorem. And remember, converse is when we switch the hypothesis and the conclusion. This one says, if two angles of a triangle are congruent, so this time we're starting out by saying the angles are congruent, then the sides opposite those are congruent. So that means this side will be congruent to this side. On the next page, we're gonna start using these theorems for problem solving. Okay, let's take a look at example number one. Example one says, the length of segment YX is 20 feet. Explain why the length of segment YZ is the same. So let's take a look at what we've got. We've got this 140 degree angle, and we have this angle that makes a linear pair with that 140 degree angle. This one is going to measure 180 minus 140 degrees, which is equal to 40 degrees. So we know that angle YZX is congruent to angle YXZ. That means that we have a triangle with two angles that are congruent. We just read in the converse of the isosceles triangle theorem, that if two angles of a triangle are congruent, then the sides opposite those angles are congruent. And that means that we know that segment YZ measures 20 feet. 
If you have any questions about this one, please ask in class. Now let's take a look at example number two. Example number two, finding the measure of an angle. Find each angle measure. In question A, we want to find the measure of angle F. We can see that we have an isosceles triangle because of the two tick marks. So that means that angle F and angle D are congruent. We know this because of the isosceles triangle theorem, which says if two sides of a triangle are congruent, then the angles opposite those sides are congruent. This is going to allow us to find the measures of angles D and F, which is what we wanted to find to begin with. So we're going to say that the measure of angle F is equal to our variable, and we'll just call it X. Now we can set up an algebraic equation because we know by the triangle sum theorem that all the three interior angles total together need to equal 180 degrees. So that's going to look like X plus X plus 22 equals 180 degrees. Of course, we're going to combine like terms. So we have 2x, and we're going to move that 22 over by subtracting 22 from both sides. That means 2x is equal to 158, and x is equal to 79. Now, this means the measure of angle F is equal to 79 degrees. Let's move on to qu question B. It looks a little bit more challenging. This time, we want to find the measure of angle G. Again, we have an isosceles triangle. We can see this by the two tick marks. And we know by the isosceles triangle theorem that the, op the angles opposite the congruent sides are also going to be congruent. So I'm going to put another arc mark in at angle J. Knowing these two angles are congruent allows us to set up an algebraic equation, but we're going to start out with the geometry notation, measure of angle J is equal to the measure of angle G, and then we're going to substitute in the different expressions. So for J, measure of angle J, we're going to put in 3x, measure of angle G, we're going to put in x plus 44. Now it's a regular old algebraic equation, and we can solve that for x. x is equal to 22, so we were trying to find the measure of angle G, which is x plus 44, or now we know 22 plus 44, so the measure of angle G is equal to 66 degrees. We can see how useful these theorems are because they're allowing us to solve some really interesting problems and they're about to we're about to get a couple more corollaries. Corollary 4-9-3, the equilateral triangle corollary says if a triangle is equilateral, then it is equiangular. So I'm going to add in arc marks because we know that this is an equi equiangular as well as an equilateral triangle. Corollary 4-9-4, equiangular triangle says if a triangle is equiangular, then it is equilateral. Okay, let's see how that's going to help us figure out example three. Example three says using properties of equilateral triangles and what we are told to find each value. We're given a triangle for question A, and we can see that it is equilateral. Because of the corollary we just learned, we also know that that means that it is equiangular. And we remember that an equilateral triangle has angles that measure 60 degrees each. That means that we can set this up as an algebraic equation, and we can either say, three times the measure of angle L equals 180 degrees, or we could say 2x plus 32, which is the measure of angle L, equals 60 degrees. And of course, this is going to put us in exactly the same place. But we're, we're going to solve this, and 60 minus 32 leaves us 28 that means that x is equal to 14, and what we were asked to find is x. At this point, we could, if we wanted to, find the measure of angle K, L, and M. 
which we can find by plugging in 14 into 2x plus 32. And that, of course, is going to give us back our 60 degrees. So this was our check. And it does check out. For question B, we want to find the value of y. Again, we have a triangle. This time, we know that this triangle is equiangular. And because of the corollaries we just learned, we know that that also means that they are equilateral, that this triangle is equilateral. So we have the side lengths given to us this time. And I'm going to caution you, in question A, we were given angle measurement. In question B, we're given side lengths. So we need to be cautious so we don't mix things up. But back to question B, we do have two side length measurements. We know that this is an equilateral and equiangular triangle, so we can set it up as an algebraic equation equating the lengths of those two sides. Once we've gotten the geometry sentences set up, we can plug in or substitute in the algebraic expressions for each of the side lengths that we have. And now we solve. So 5y minus 4y gives us y, and 12 plus 6 gives us 18. We were asked to find the value of y, and we have. And at this point, we could find the length of segment NO, which is the same size as OP, which is the same size as PN, and that is 5 times Y, which we now know is 18, minus 6, giving us 84, which we didn't know before, and it wasn't part of this question, but it could have been. Now, that is the last example that we're doing in this section. That brings us to homework time. Good luck with your homework, and I'll see you in class.